Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to Dylan Talks Tone. This is the podcast weekly where we discuss everything having to do with guitar tone from the guitar pick all the way to the speaker of your amp and everything in between. Um, today, this episode is kind of a cool one because we know that the 2016 Winter NAM show has just completed uh, uh, last night, actually, on, on Sunday night. And so we were going to talk about a few things that we kind of saw um, going, you know, through through the NAMM show and uh, maybe some trends. Um, I, what I did earlier in the week was I shot out on, on, local, uh, on social media and I said, hey, you know, uh, what are some things that you saw, some trends that you saw, some things that interest you, some things you thought were weird, um, some groundbreaking stuff, anything comment on it and we'll talk about it. And so I went ahead and compiled all that stuff uh, earlier this afternoon and uh, I got a few got a few cool things to talk about. I couldn't we couldn't talk about everything. We'd be here all night um, because there was a lot of really really cool stuff. Um so let's just get right to it. Some things from Nam. Um First of all, before we get into each individual thing that I'm going to talk about, a few of you said, uh, a few of you asked me uh, earlier, in fact, uh, just a few minutes ago on Facebook, somebody said, do you see some sort of uh, trend? You know, is there any kind of trend that's going on? Uh, you know, have you seen anything kind of kind of breaking out and going a certain direction at NAM? And the thing that I'm going to say, um, and I'm a, I'm a big one for this. Now, I may not be a big one for every little thing that that came out at NAM. I may not like every little thing that came out at NAM, but what I am a big I'm a big proponent of progress in uh the musical instrument industry. I think that um I think that we get bogged down in tradition a lot um because, you know, the electric guitar like Telecaster for instance came out in the 40s and you know, popularity in the 50s and and all that stuff is a lot of people, uh, many people would say that it has remained unchanged. And so this year, I think there's been, um, the last couple years especially, but this NAMM show, I really noticed some major things. We're going to talk about them. Um, one of the things that I thought was kind of interesting, and I don't know how useful I would find this because I'm not, um, I don't use pedals the way that this thing would be used, but uh, the Gig Rig Auto Pot MIDI Controlled Pot Turner. I don't know if any of you have seen this on uh, the demos on YouTube, uh, but that thing's pretty interesting. Uh, it's MIDI controlled, and you basically take a knob off of your pedal, and you put this thing on there, and then if you wanted to change any of the parameters um, on that pedal, you could program it to do so um, versus bending over and doing it. So you could actually do it on the fly in the middle of a song. Again, something that I don't personally, I don't know that I would use that, but man, if I had one, I probably would find a use for it. It's one of those things that you you probably would find a use for it once you saw it. So that was an interesting thing. Completely new, you know, I, I don't know anybody that's, that's not a different take on something or a new take on anything. That's something completely new I've never seen before. Um, let's see, one of the other things here was, okay, this is a big one and this is probably going to ruffle some feathers. Um, the boss wrote by Roland, uh, had a, had a new amp, had a couple new amps actually. Now we know over the last couple years, the Roland blues cube, um, you know, that of course the jazz course solid state from a long time ago and the, and the blues cube in the last couple years, you know, there's that whole tube versus solid state versus modeling kind of controversy that goes on the internet and you're going to. But man, I tell you what, uh, I've heard this Blues Cube, and again, tradition has a thing, and these new things have a thing too. Um, are they going to replace the tube amp? Mm, probably not right now. Probably not right now, but I tell you what, uh, that Blues Cube is pretty cool. And so is uh, the Blues Cube Hot, which is their new model that just came out. But the real kind of head turner and the big... Mm, big controversial thing because it's pretty expensive is the Boss Waza amp head. 
I think, what is this thing like? 150 watts, um, and they call it their, it's like a, a their performance, you know, live amp, but it's all solid state. Um, and so this thing is gonna be pretty interesting. The ultimate high gain modded tone, four independent channels and custom voicing options via tone capsules that can be changed. So this is a pretty far departure from even a modeling amp. It almost sounds like they're this is they're trying to create their own little world with this particular uh, particular amp. We'll have to see. That one's pretty interesting. That this has been something that you on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram have been hitting me with. What is up with this thing? It's ridiculously expensive. Is it gonna you know? Um, it's been a been a pretty controversial one. Um, all right. Speaking of breaking from tradition, uh, Fender has come up with a whole bunch of different models. And of course, remember last year they did their uh, they did their deal where they made a, a, a model of a guitar for a month. Um, so now they're doing that again. And probably the one to make the most waves is this limited edition American Standard Offset Telecaster. Um, now, of course, in some of the Telecaster groups across the interwebs and across social media, people are like, you have got to be kidding me. This is not a Telecaster. This does not make sense. This is not a Telecaster. Um, it kind of looks like a Jazzmaster, right? Um, it kind of looks like a Jag. Now remember a Jag is a different scale length, so that would be a completely different kind of animal than this. Whether you like it or you don't, the bottom line is that people like offset guitars. Offset guitars are extremely popular. And um, there's, there's no way of getting around that. And there are going to be a lot of people that want the Telecaster tone and hardware in an offset body. And in fact, we know there are quite a few boutique builders that have been doing basically the same thing for probably five or six years. So honestly, is this something new? No, not really. And is it really something breaking from tradition? No, because there's been many, many thousands of people buying this stuff from other places. It just happens that this one says Fender on the peg head, and a lot of people really don't like that for some reason. It's kind of interesting. So that one's a big one. Now, the next one I want to talk about, again, breaking from tradition seems to be the whole kind of theme here. We're going to go back to amps for a minute. Now, line six, um, you know, many people would say, well, you know, line six is line six but we know that in the last year especially now obviously the pod thing has always been super cool uh, for its particular application not everybody likes them but um, for its particular application they are really good at what they do and they have gotten better and now we know that the helix came out and uh, if you are at all into effects modeling or amplifier modeling if you are starting to go that direction that thing is something that really makes you want to lean that way almost if you're already kind of contemplating it because of the price point, right? So now here's this thing, the Line 6 Firehawk 1500. This thing is 1500 watts and it is a modeling amp, okay? It has six speakers in it to um, kind of... Uh, Basically, what it what it sounds like is depending on it doesn't matter you know uh, what tone you're using or what you're using this thing for having six different drivers is going to give you a wider range. I'm really excited to actually get my hands on this thing. Again, are we all going to sell all of our tube amps and go to all this modeling stuff? Probably not. However, um, in the interest of progress, I would have to say that these things uh, in many applications are going to start catching on. Are they going to catch on everywhere? Probably not. Probably not. But uh, this is a thing. Uh, the 21st century is here. And you know what? We got to get on it. We got to get on it. All right. So let's go back a little bit. Uh, let's go back a little bit more traditional. Um, we're going to kick it back a little bit here. Uh, another one of my favorite. This is probably... Out of everything that I've seen at NAMM, this might be my favorite thing. And the thing that I am the most excited about. 
Uh, there's a gentleman named Jeff Bober. He actually uh, was a creator. He's got a long amp history, Buddha, and all kind of. He makes some killer amps. Um, and he has a company now called East Amplification. He also, uh, at Premier Guitar Magazine, he does the Ask Amp Man column. Um, this dude's pretty smart when it comes to amps. And um, this particular amp that he's got out now, what is this thing called? The Duality Series. And it sounds like it's going to be a 20 watt, a 30 watt, or a 50 watt head or combo. Um, it's a little bit different. It's got, uh, of course, it's got a clean channel and a dirty channel. Um, the one that he demoed at NAM that I saw was EL84s. Um, and it's got a clean channel, it's got a dirty channel, it's got um, three different, it sounds kind of EQ, he basically calls it uh, his Abe switch, which is the uh, American, British, and then he calls it East for, you know, his kind of signature tone uh, in that amp. And then it also has, uh, which is really cool, I, I, I like all of that, and then it also has um, something that may not seem very traditional however it makes sense is to put an FET boost in the thing uh, which basically is kind of like putting your clean boost in your amp which is uh, that's cool I want to try one of these things man I think they're really really cool I'm this is the thing I think out of all of NAM that I'm the most excited about um, for playing and for being excited about it um, so there's the other thing that I'm personally excited about, obviously because Dylan Pickups is my thing, and making pickups um, for the business side of it, I'm very excited about the new Gretches, the lower price of Gretches, because um, those are going to be upgradable and very, very cool guitars that are that are definitely going to be a thing that have come out of NAM that I think uh, the aftermarket is really, really going to love. You know, we just came out with our Filtertron, so I'm, I'm pretty excited about that. Um, and that's really it. Those are probably the things that, and, and again, the, uh, the East Amplification thing was probably my choice out of this whole list. Everything else that I talked about actually was chosen by you. Um, over the last four or five days, we've been trying to get um, input from you and love it or hate it a lot of these things uh, breaking from tradition quite a bit um, whether you have a MIDI controlled pot turner that turns your knobs for you on your on your uh, pedal board or a 150 watt Roland head or a Telecaster that doesn't look like a Telecaster which is actually a really cool guitar if if you just let it be on its own. Uh, the Line Six modeling amp that's uh, 1,500 watts. That's crazy. That that is crazy. Um, and this new Gretsch stuff is pretty cool. So you know, um, I think that's uh, that would be my take. Those are the things I took away from Nam simply because of the. Um, Simply because of the whole, you know, really wanting to uh, break out of the break out of the norm. There was more stuff there that was like that. Some new pedals, um, some other new amps. Um, but those are the things that I that I really thought of. Um, so let's talk about some techie kind of stuff. Um, at Dylan talks tone. Of course, we talk a lot about tone, right? So this week. Um, this week we shot a video and it got a lot, a lot of action. Um, if you go to Dylan Pickup's YouTube channel, uh, do pots in my guitar need to match? Uh, this was a question that came up quite a bit. It comes up quite a bit. Uh, people talk about matched pots. Um, basically meaning if you buy um, 500K pots and you put them in your Les Paul, um, or you put 250K pots in your Telecaster, do they need to be... 500k and 500k dead on or can they vary a little bit um the short answer is watch the video um because it goes into a lot of detail but the the little bit longer answer to that is if you have a volume tone circuit those two knobs are doing exact are not doing exactly the same thing anyhow 
So, um, so no, you don't really need them to match. Um, and as far as like a Les Paul style circuit goes, yeah, you want your volumes to be pretty similar. Um, but many of the quote unquote expensive stuff, you know, the quote unquote expensive pots that you can buy are six to eight. Well, I think, uh, what is the running number I saw the other day? 8% to 10% tolerance between the two. Um, in the testing that I've done them handfuls of stuff that I've got here, I, it's all that anyway. So there's no point in really really buying them if you if you buy four pots and you put them in your Les Paul just take the two closest ones together and use those in the volume side and then take the two closest ones together and put them in the tone side um, just so they're both doing exactly the same you know the same task uh, choose the closest ones together that would be the fast easy answer but watch that video on Dylan Pickup's uh, YouTube channel and um, and definitely subscribe to that channel because uh, we got a lot of stuff cool stuff going there and it's really to this point um, where you all have been really driving my traffic, or not driving my traffic, driving my uh, content. You know, you have a question, and uh, we answer it. So that's uh, that's a cool thing. Um, let me see. I'm trying to just go through anything else we want to talk about. If we have any other questions, hang on one second here. And what we're gonna do? I wasn't planning on doing this because this kind of puts a crimp in my flow but since I've got you here let's just make sure that we're getting everybody taken care of I just wanted to make sure uh, yeah going through the comments that you're leaving kind of on the fly because a lot of you are watching this live so um, 150 watts on a solid state amp. Why so much wattage? Does that affect its headroom much? Well, it always does. And you know, you got to remember that with uh, transistors, uh, when they break up, they break up different than tubes do. Um, that's the whole thing, right? Like when we have uh, when we have people that don't like solid state amps, it's because they don't like how they break up. So a lot of times, and I don't know if that amp is a an example of that, I don't know if that would, would be one, but I know for my personal use, if I use a solid state circuit, I want it to be totally clean. I wanna have way more watts there than I use, and then just use pedals uh, to push it with. So yeah, you would wanna have definitely as much headroom as possible. Um, Uh, let's see, do, 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 do. just going down through and making sure that we got everybody taken care of, and I think so. Thank you very much for joining us this week on the second episode of Dylan Talks Tone. We are going to be doing this every week. If you have questions or if you uh, want to make a contribution to our podcast, I would definitely invite you to check us out at dylanpickups.com. DylanTalksTone.com, which is where our blog lives and where many of these podcasts live. You can check us out on iTunes at Dylan Talks Tone. You can check us out um, all over the place. You can find me pretty easy on, on the internet. So uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, next week, we're going to discuss... Um, one of the on the technical side of the blog, we're going to or uh, the podcast, we're going to discuss the uh, the relationship between wire gauge and magnet strength for the overall output of a pickup. Knowing that the DC resistance is just a number, okay. So that's what we're going to talk about next week. If you have any questions or comments or additions you want to make to that, you can add that to uh, what you see here. Or shoot me an email or send me a message on Facebook. Until then, my name is Dylan. This has been Dylan Talks Tone. And I hope you all have a great week. Have a good night.